be perfect. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. That's easy enough, right? Be perfect. That's the answer. I'll just be perfect. Sounds good. We should be really good at that, right? How many of you here are perfect? Any hands? One. Don, thank you. Good, good. Don's perfect. So Don, can I pick on you a little bit? Sweet. So uh, you have indeed uh, turned your cheek to anyone who has taken a swing at you and not punched back. Yep, yep, good, good. Uh, anybody? Uh, That's okay. We have professionals in the booth. We'll get it handled. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you've, you've given your, your cloak as well as your coat, right? And anybody, any beggars you've come across on the street, you've emptied your wallet, surely, right? Your mom is saying no. <laughs> Uh, loaned out money to anybody that's asked you? Yes, your mom agrees with that one, that's good. Uh, gone the second mile, all of these things. Loved your enemies and prayed for those who hate you. I'll stop praying on you specifically and turn to everyone. We've all done that, right? We've all been that person? Mm, maybe not. I can't even put myself in that category. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Thankfully, it seems that we are not alone in this category of not being perfect. Israel, who was in exile, is put on trial here in the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. If you want to pull out your Bibles and turn to Isaiah 43. Isaiah's in the middle. I think it's somewhere around page 580, I think they told me <clears throat> last service. I, for I forgot to look it up, and then someone told me, and I forgot to write it down, so, right? <clears throat> Isaiah 43, and we're going to start at the second half of that reading. We're going to start around verse... 22. This, um, this text we have in Isaiah is almost a, a court speech, right? Something that's said when someone accuses you, puts you on trial. It's really strong language here. Yet you did not call upon me, O Jacob, but you have been weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me your sheep for burnt offerings or honored me with your sacrifices. Now I, God says, I have not burdened you with offerings or wearied you with frankincense, but you have not brought me sweet cane with money or satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices, but you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. I think if we're honest with ourselves, if we are put on trial, if our lives are put to the scrutiny of the people and more fully the scrutiny of God, we will come up short, right? We have missed the mark. We are not perfect. We stand accused just like the people of Israel who were in exile. And I surely know I would not like my life put on display to be judged by all people. I don't know how politicians do it. Uh, it amazes me the stuff they dig up on people. I can't imagine what that's like. I can't imagine what that's like. We all fall short of the glory of God. Apparently, I like to quote from Romans. I looked that one up. 
I am trying to get better at this whole remembering scripture and where it comes from thing. So this is from Romans chapter 3, verse 23. I looked it up. (laughs) Um, We all fall short of the glory of God. Be perfect. Thankfully, we have good news for us, friends. Right here in this first part of this chapter of Isaiah in verse 18, where we start today, we are told, oh, actually, I'm sorry, verse 25. The first piece of good news that I'd like to bring to your attention is verse 25. Those of you that have your Bibles out, will you read it with me? I... I am he who blots out your transgressions for my sake, and I will not remember your sins. Good news, God promises to be forgetful. That's exciting, right? Yeah, God promises us that God is not going to remember all of that stuff, all of that baggage that we carry around with us. God's already forgotten it. It's already been washed away. Pretty cool. We don't often think of being forgetful as being a really good thing. But in this case, wow. God's not going to remember any of that stuff. Washed away. Fresh start. Second chance. If you're a kid out playing in the streets, it's a do-over, right? (laughs) All of it's gone. All of that former stuff. The baggage dragging you down. Not remembered. Amazing, right? That's part of what baptism is all about. That washing clean. But it doesn't just happen once, right? I think I told you the story about Constantine. He waited to get baptized until he was on his deathbed to be sure that he wasn't going to sin again before he died. (laughs) That forgetfulness happens all the time for us. Every time we wash our faith, Luther said, every time you wash your face, remember your baptism. You have been made clean, washed, Fresh start, second chance, 17th chance, 437th chance. As many chances as you need. God doesn't remember. But then, God doesn't just say, try again with the tools you have and expect a different outcome. Whose whose quote was that? Expecting different results with the same, that's crazy. Who said that? Einstein, thank you. That's not what God does. God doesn't give us the same tools and expect us to come up with different results. If you look at verse 18, God tells us to be forgetful. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people and the people whom I formed for myself so that they may declare my praise. God promises to do a new thing with us a new thing, completely different. We were talking in our Tuesday morning women's Bible study about this, and there were a couple of people who thought, well, you know, we can remember the good stuff, and we'll just forget the bad stuff, and then we'll add on more good stuff, and that'll be the new thing. And I'm not sure that's quite it. God says God's gonna do a complete new thing, and I know that's scary. Uncharted waters are always scary. 
tenuous. But the good news is, God doesn't promise to do a new thing with us and leave us to do it all on our own, right? God promises to be with us no matter what. Even though we're doing a brand new thing. And whatever may come, the good, the bad, the ugly, God promises to be with us. Right? Tomorrow we'll wake up. Does anybody really expect, maybe other than Dawn, that they will can be perfect? <laughs> Probably not. We might mess up here or there. Garrett might have a bad day here or there. But God promises that the sun from our reading in Matthew, the sun will rise on the evil and the good. And God will send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. God is with us no matter what. Through the good, through the bad, through the sleepless nights of crying, through those really good nights where you get all the sleep you wanted and you wake up like, yes! God is with us, no matter what. No matter what. So I wasn't expecting to be able to preach today because Pastor Dalsing was supposed to preach, but his uh, granddaughter is being baptized this Sunday in Ohio, so surprise! Um, you get stuck with me again. Yay! A couple weeks ago, I preached, and I put a challenge out there. I, the, the reason I say that is because I didn't expect to be able to ask this question, but um, a couple weeks ago, I, I posed a challenge to those of you who are here to give a hug or surprise someone and see what happened. Did anybody actually get to do that? Maybe one, maybe one. Anybody else? Oh, there's one over there, yeah. Does anybody wanna share that story? Anybody willing to, to risk sharing a story? No? What? The baby is, Garrett's sharing a story, yeah. <laughs> Not yet, but that day will come soon when they start saying words you do not expect. <laughs> I'm, I'm at that stage right now. It's lots of fun. Um, my point with bringing that up is uh, we get those do-over moments in our life all the time. And I like to think that that moment, if you were able to have one a couple weeks ago where you uh, gave someone a hug that really needed a hug, that that might be a do-over moment for them, or maybe even for you. Um, when I say that God, uh, God walks with us through this, God doesn't just give us God's self. God puts us in a community of people these people that gather around you here today, I would like to think are people that would be there for you, right? If you're in that spot where you need that hug, where you need that second chance, the people that surround you right now, I'm guessing more likely than not would be willing to be there for you. I would love to be there for you. Anybody else? Willing to be there for their friends? Yeah. Whole lot of people here. Thanks. We're not just left alone with God. We're given a whole community of people to walk with us on the way. To help us find those second chances. To help us be a little forgetful of our baggage of the things that hold us back, to help us remember 
that God is forgetful and isn't going to hold that stuff against us. That God loves us and promises to be with us no matter what. Chance after chance after chance. Those are the promises that God has for us this day, friends. I hope you find time in the coming week to see your second chances, to see those do-over moments, to cut yourself a break, to remember that God loves you always, no matter what. Thanks be to God. Amen.